Hey guys, Barky back with another iceberg video. This one, we'll be going over the disturbing kids books iceberg, so strap in, grab yourself a Coke Zero, and let's get right into it. By the way, this is your content warning. There's some pretty messed up stuff on this iceberg, so if you're triggered by themes of abuse, assault, or things similar, click off now. Also, by the way, if you're not subscribed, consider doing so. I'm trying to reach 15,000 subs by the end of the year. I'll be skipping over some of the entries that people know very well, like Coraline and 13 Reasons Why, The Fault in Our Stars, etc. A Monster Calls. A Monster Calls is a novel written by Patrick Ness based on an original idea by Sioban Dog. The book was published in 2011 and it's known for its powerful storytelling and emotional depth. The novel is complemented by haunting illustrations by Jim Kay. The story revolves around Connor O'Malley, a young boy who is grappling with the impending loss of his mother to cancer. Connor is visited by a massive yew tree that comes to life at night and takes on the form of a monster. The monster serves as a sort of ancient elemental force that has come to help Connor navigate the complexities of his emotions and the challenges he faces. As Connor deals with his mother's illness, he is also contending with school bullies, a strained relationship with his grandmother, and his own feelings. The monster tells Connor a series of stories, each with its own moral, and eventually, Connor is compelled to confront his deepest fears and truths. The novel explores themes of grief, loss, and the complexity of human emotions. It delves into the ways people cope with different situations, using the fantastical elements of the monster and its stories to metaphorically address Connor's inner turmoil. Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark is a collection of horror stories for children, written by Alvin Schwartz and originally illustrated by Stephen Gamow. The book was first published in 1981 and has since become a classic in the genre of children's horror literature. The collection is known for its eerie and unsettling tales, as well as Gamble's distinctive and haunting illustrations. The book contains a series of short stories, folk tales, and urban legends, each designed to chill and thrill young readers. The stories often involve supernatural elements like ghosts, monsters, and other spooky themes. Some of the stories are adaptations of traditional folklore, while others are original creations by Schwartz. The simplicity of the storytelling and brevity of the tales make them accessible to a wide range of readers. One of the reasons the book has become iconic is the controversy surrounding Gamble's illustration. His creepy and atmospheric artwork has been praised for its ability to evoke a sense of fear and unease, but has also led to challenges and bans in some school libraries due to concerns about the potential to frighten young readers. Girl Underground Girl Underground is a children's novel written by Morris Gleitzman, an Australian author known for his work in children's and young adult literature. The book was first published in 2004. The story follows the adventures of a young girl named Bridget, also known as Bridie, who lives in a Catholic orphanage. Bridie is a talented writer, and she often creates stories as a means of escape from her challenging reality. Her life takes an unexpected turn when she discovers a young mute boy named Minzies hiding in a cupboard. Together, they embark on a journey to find Minzies parents, and their quest takes them to various places and introduces them to a range of characters. As with many of Morris Gleisman's works, Girl Underground tackles serious themes with a blend of humor and sensitivity. The novel explores the power of storytelling as a form of coping and self-expression, and it addresses such issues as friendship, family, and the search for identity. Boy Overboard Boy Overboard is a children's novel written by Australian author Morris Clydesman. The book, first published in 2002, addresses themes of courage, resilience, and the pursuit of dreams set against the backdrop of a young boy's passion for soccer. The story revolves around Jamal and Bibi, two siblings living in Afghanistan where the Taliban regime rules. Despite the restrictions imposed on girls participating in sports, Bibi is an exceptionally talented soccer player, and Jamal is determined to support his sister's dreams. When the siblings discover an opportunity to try out for a soccer team in Australia, they embark on a perilous journey to reach the land of their dreams. The title Boy Overboard refers to incident during their journey where Jamal goes overboard while attempting to secure their boat's Australian flag. The novel addresses serious issues such as the challenges faced by refugees, the impact of oppressive regimes, and the importance of perseverance and hope. Z for Zachariah Z for Zachariah is a post-apocalyptic science fiction novel written by Robert C. O'Brien. The book was originally published in 1974 and is known for its exploration of survival, isolation, and the complexities of human relationships in the aftermath of a nuclear disaster. The story is told from the perspective of a teenage girl named Anne Bird, who believes she may be the last person left alive after a nuclear war. She has been living alone in the valley that has somehow remained unaffected by radiation. Anne's isolation is disrupted when she discovers another survivor, a man named John Loomis, in radiation-proof suit. As the two cautiously establish a life together, tensions arise as they navigate the challenges of living in a desolate world. 
The title, Z for Zechariah, is a reference to a children's book that Anne reads in the novel, where each letter of the alphabet represents a, the survivor of an apocalypse. The story delves into themes of trust, morality, and consequences of nuclear war, examining how individuals cope with loneliness and uncertainty of a devastated world. Hatchet Hatchet is a young adult survival novel written by Gary Paulson. The book was first published in 1987 and has become a classic in the genre of adolescent literature. The story is a gripping tale of survival and self-discovery. The protagonist of the novel is Brian Robeson, a 13-year-old boy who finds himself stranded in the Canadian wilderness after a small plane in which he was a passenger crashes. The pilot dies and Brian is left to fend for himself with nothing but a hatchet his mother gave him before the flight. As Brian struggles to survive in the harsh and unforgiving environment, the novel explores his physical and emotional journey. Brian must learn to find food, build shelter, and protect himself from the elements and wild animals. Along the way, he grapples with loneliness, fear, and the trauma of the crash. The story also delves into themes of resilience, resourcefulness, and the power of the human spirit. Go Ask Alice Go Ask Alice is a young adult novel published in 1971. The book is presented as the diary of an anonymous teenage girl, and it explores themes of drug abuse, identity, and the struggles of adolescence. The novel is often described as an anti-drug cautionary tale. The diary begins with the protagonist's initial reluctance to start a journal, but quickly evolves into a detailed account of her experiences. She writes about the challenge of fitting in at new school, peer pressure, and the desire for acceptance. The tone of the diary changes dramatically when the protagonist attends a party where she unknowingly consumes a drink spiked with LSD. This event marks the beginning of her descent into drug addiction. As the diary progresses, the protagonist becomes increasingly entangled in a world of drugs, seeking solace and escape from her troubles. The novel chronicles her struggles with addiction, relationships, and attempts at rehabilitation. The journal entries vividly depict the highs and lows of her experiences. Go Ask Alice was initially published anonymously, with the author credited as anonymous. However, it was later revealed that the book was a work of fiction written by Beatrice Sparks, a therapist and youth counselor. Sparks claimed that the novel was based on the real diary of a teenage girl who struggled with drug addiction. The Face on the Milk Carton The Face on the Milk Carton is a young adult novel written by Caroline B. Cooney. It was first published in 1990 and is the first book in the Janie Johnson series. The novel falls under the genre of contemporary realistic fiction with elements of mystery and suspense. The story follows the life of Janie Johnson, a teenager who one day discovers her own childhood photo on the back of a milk carton. Shocked by this revelation, Janie starts questioning her identity and begins to unravel the mysteries surrounding her past. As she investigates, she learned that she was kidnapped as a young child and that the people she believed were her parents are not her biological family. Janie faces the challenge of coming to terms with her true identity and the difficult circumstances surrounding her abduction. The novel explores themes of identity, family, and the emotional toll of discovering life-altering secrets. It also delves into the legal and ethical implications of Janie's situation as she grapples with the desire to reconnect with her biological family. The Velveteen Rabbit The Velveteen Rabbit, written by Marjorie Williams, originally published in 1922, is a classic children's book that has endured through generations. The story is a heartwarming tale of a stuffed rabbit's journey to become real through the transformative power of love. The central character is a toy rabbit who is initially new and shiny, but he longs to be loved and cherished by a child. The boy receives the Velveteen Rabbit as a Christmas gift, and the two form a deep bond. The rabbit learns about love, companionship, and the importance of being genuine. As the Velveteen Rabbit becomes worn and tattered from being played with and loved, a magical transformation begins. The Skin Horse, an older and wiser toy in the nursery, explains that becoming real happens when a toy is truly loved, even if it means experiencing some wear and tear. The story takes a poignant turn when the boy falls ill with scarlet fever. To prevent the spread of the disease, the nursery is disinfected and all the toys are ordered to be burned. However, Fairy appears to the Velveteen Rabbit, representing the magic of transformation through love. In a beautiful and moving scene, the fairy turns the Velveteen Rabbit into a real living rabbit. Call of the Wild Call of the Wild is a classic adventure novel written by American author Jack London. The book was first published in 1903 and is set during the Klondike Gold Rush. It is one of London's most well-known and widely read works. The story is centered around a domesticated dog named Buck, who was stolen from his comfortable home in California 
and sold into the harsh life of an Alaskan sled dog, Buck undergoes a series of challenging experiences as he adapts to the brutal realities of wilderness. The novel explores themes of survival, primal instincts, and the struggle between civilization and the wild. As Buck is exposed to the harsh conditions of the frozen north, he taps into his ancestral instincts and learns to survive in a world where only the fittest endure. He faces the challenges of brutal weather, competing with other dogs, and encountering various human masters, some cruel and others more understanding. The character of Buck undergoes a transformation, reverting to a more primal state as he heeds the call of the wild. Throughout the novel, there's a stark contrast between the domesticated, comfortable life Buck once knew and the savage, untamed world into which he is thrust. I Never Promised You a Rose Garden I Never Promised You a Rose Garden is a novel written by American author Joanne Greenberg using the pen name Hannah Green. The book was first published in 1964 and is a semi-autobiographical account of Greenberg's experiences working with mentally ill individuals. The story centers around a teenage girl named Deborah Blau, who is institutionalized in a mental hospital. Deborah creates an elaborate fantasy world called Ear, where she is a queen to escape the pain and confusion of the real world. Throughout the novel, the narrative alternates between Deborah's experiences in the mental hospital and her internal world in Ear. Dr. Fried, Deborah's psychiatrist, becomes a central figure in the story as he helps to work Deborah confront and overcome the traumas and challenges that led to her psychological breakdown. The novel explores themes of mental illness, the nature of reality, the impact of family dynamics on mental health, and the process of therapy. Life as we knew it. Life as we knew it is a young adult science fiction novel written by Susan Beth Pfeiffer, who was first published in 2006 as the first book in the Last Survivor series. The novel explores themes of survival, humanity, family, and the impact of a catastrophic event on ordinary people. The story is presented in diary format, with the protagonist, Miranda, documenting her experiences as life on Earth undergoes a dramatic transformation. The novel begins with Miranda leading a relatively normal teenage life in a small town. However, everything changes when an asteroid collides with the moon, altering its orbit and causing widespread environmental disasters on Earth. As a result of the moon's displacement, natural disasters ensue, including earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions. The world is plunged into chaos as climate change disrupts ecosystems, food supplies become scarce, and societies break down. Miranda's diary entries chronicle the struggles her family faces as they try to adapt to the rapidly deteriorating conditions. The novel focuses on the day-to-day -day challenges of survival, including securing food, dealing with limited resources, and protecting the family from the dangers that arise in this post-apocalyptic world. As society collapses, Miranda and her family must confront their fears and make difficult decisions to ensure their survival. Ketchup Clouds Ketchup Clouds is a young adult novel written by Annabelle Pitcher. The book was first published in 2012, and the story is narrated through letters written by the protagonist, a teenage girl named Zoe Collins, to a death row inmate. The novel combines elements of mystery, romance, and coming of age. Zoe begins writing letters to Stuart Harris, a man on death row in Texas, confessing a dark secret that she can't share with anyone else. Through her letters, Zoe recounts the events leading up to her secrets and reflects on her life, relationships, and the consequences of her actions. The central mystery revolves around the death of a boy named Stuart and Zoe's involvement in the events leading to his demise. As she pours out her thoughts and feelings in the letters, the reader gradually learns about the circumstances surrounding Stuart's death and the impact it had on Zoe's life. Ketchup Clouds explores themes of guilt, forgiveness, and the complexities of human relationships. The title refers to a metaphor Zoe uses to describe the sky, imagining it as a bottle of ketchup turned upside down, with the clouds representing the thickness of the sauce that prevents the truth from coming out. The Subtle Knife The Subtle Knife is the second book in Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials trilogy. The trilogy, consisting of Northern Lights, published as The Golden Compass in North America, The Subtle Knife, and The Amber Spyglass, is a work of fantasy fiction that explores complex themes such as science, religion, and the nature of consciousness. The Subtle Knife continues the story of Lyra Bellacqua, the protagonist in the first book, and introduces a new character named Will Perry. The novel is known for its multi-world setting, including incorporating parallel universes and alternate realities. The concept of parallel universes becomes central to the story as characters navigate between different worlds using a magical instrument called, called the Subtle Knife. Lyra, a young girl from one universe, and Will, a boy from our world, become the primary protagonists. Their destinies are intertwined as they embark on a perilous journey across multiple dimensions. The title 
title refers to a mystical and powerful knife that can cut through anything, including the fabric between worlds. Will discovers and wields the knife, making him a crucial figure in the unfolding events. The oppressive and authoritarian organization known as the Magisterium plays a significant role in the trilogy, and it seeks to control knowledge and suppress dissenting ideas, and in Lyra's world, humans are accompanied by demons, animal companions that represent their souls. However, in Will's world, these people do not have visible demons. Speak Speak is a young adult novel written by Lori Halsa Anderson. The book was first published in 1999 and has since become a widely studied and acclaimed work in the genre. Speak addresses themes of trauma, identity, and the power of voice. The story follows the protagonist, Melinda Sordino, who is entering high school as a social outcast after a traumatic event occurred at a summer party. Melinda becomes an elective mute, choosing not to speak as a way of coping with the emotional fallout from the incident. The novel is structured around Melinda's internal monologue and her experiences as she navigates the challenges of high school, bullying, and the consequences of her silence. She discovers an outlet for her emotions through her art class. The symbolism in her artwork becomes a powerful means of communication as she struggles to find her voice. And throughout the novel, Melinda forms an unexpected connection with other students who have their own struggles. These relationships become crucial in her journey toward healing and self-discovery. And as she gains strength and begins to confront the truth about what happened to her, the novel explores themes of self-advocacy and empowerment. Melinda learns to speak out not only for herself, but also for others who may be facing similar challenges. Killing Mr. Griffin Killing Mr. Griffin is a young adult thriller novel written by Lois Duncan. The book was first published in 1978 and has become a popular and controversial work in the genre. Lois Duncan is known for her contributions to young adult literature, often exploring dark and suspenseful themes. The plot of Killing Mr. Griffin revolves around a group of high school students who conspire to play a prank on their strict English teacher, Mr. Griffin. However, the prank takes a dark turn, leading to unintended and tragic consequences. The students plan to teach Mr. Griffin a lesson by kidnapping him and holding him hostage for a short period. The prank is intended to be harmless, but the situation quickly spirals out of control, leading to Mr. Griffin's death. The students find themselves caught in a web of lies and guilt as they grapple with the consequences of their action. The novel explores moral dilemmas and the psychological toll of keeping a terrible secret. The characters face internal conflicts as they question their own actions and decisions. Lois Duncan masterfully creates a suspenseful atmosphere, keeping the readers on the edge of their seats as they navigate the twists and turns of the plot. Looking for JJ Looking for JJ is a young adult novel written by Anne Cassidy. The book was first published in 2004 and explores themes of identity, redemption, and the impact of past crime on a young person's life. The story centers around Jennifer Jones, who, as a child, was involved in a notorious crime. In her youth, she was known as the girl with no past after being convicted of murdering a younger child. The novel picks up years later when Jennifer has been released from prison, now living under a new identity, Lucy. The narrative alternates between the present and flashbacks to Jennifer's earlier life leading up to the crime. The novel delves into Jennifer's struggle to reinvent herself and grapple with the consequences of her actions, and the question of whether people can truly change and find redemption is a central theme. It also explores the impact of crime on Jennifer's life as well as the lives of the victim's families and the community at large. The ripple effect of a heinous act are a significant focus of the narrative. How I Live Now how I Live Now is a young adult novel written by Meg Rosa. The book was first published in 2004 and has gained acclaim for its unique narrative style and exploration of themes such as war, love, and survival. The novel is narrated by a 15-year-old Daisy, an American girl sent to live with her cousins in the English countryside. The narrative is distinctive for its stream of consciousness style, offering readers an intimate and immediate connection to Daisy's thoughts and experiences. The story is set in near-future England and revolves around Daisy's experience during the fictional World War. The war disrupts the idyllic setting of the English countryside, and the characters must confront the challenges of survival in the midst of conflict. As the war unfolds, Daisy forms a romantic connection with one of her cousins, Edmund. The exploration of love and relationships becomes a significant aspect of the novel. The novel delves into dynamics of family relationships, both biological and the bonds formed during times of the crisis. The cousins, who initially feel like strangers, develop deep connections as they rely on each other for support. Lessons from a Dead Girl Lessons from a Dead Girl is a young adult novel written by Joe Knowles. The book was first published in 2007 and explores sensitive and thought-provoking themes related to friendship, abuse, and the impact of trauma on individuals. The novel is narrated by Lane, a high school student who reflects on her past friendship with a girl named Leia. Lane's narrative is introspective and delves into her complex emotions and memories. The story revolves around that friendship 
between Lane and Leia, exploring the intricacies and power dynamics within their relationship. The narrative navigates the evolution of their friendship and the consequences of certain choices. It addresses sensitive and challenging themes such as abuse and trauma and it explores the long-lasting effects of traumatic experiences on individuals involved. If You Find Me If You Find Me is a young adult contemporary novel written by Emily Murdoch. The book was first published in 2013 and explores themes of survival, family, and the aftermath of trauma. The novel follows the story of Carrie and her younger sister, Janessa, who have been living in the woods for years with their mentally ill mother. One day, their father, who they thought had abandoned them, discovers them and brings them back to civilization. The sisters must now adjust to a new life with their father and his family, facing the challenges of assimilating into society after years of isolation. The narrative delves into the girls' experience of survival in the wilderness and the emotional and physical challenges they faced. It explores how the early life in the woods has shaped them and how they cope with the transition to a more conventional existence. As Carrie and Janessa reconnect with their father and half-sister, Delaney, the novel explores complexities of family dynamics. It addresses issues of trust, forgiveness, and the process of rebuilding relationships that have been fractured by secrets and circumstances. If You Find Me also addresses sensitive topics such as abuse, mental illness, and the challenges faced by individuals who have experienced trauma. Crank Crank is a young adult novel written by Ellen Hopkins. It was first published in 2004 and is the first book in the Crank trilogy. The novel is written in a unique and distinctive verse style, using free verse poetry to tell the story. Crank is loosely based on the author's daughter's struggles with methamphetamine addiction. The novel is written in a series of free verse poems as stated before, each offering a snapshot of the protagonist's experiences. This format provides a raw and intimate look into the main character's thoughts and emotions. The story follows Christina, a high school junior, as she visits her absent father in Albuquerque for the summer. During her stay, she is introduced to crystal meth, referred to as Crank. Christina's experimentation with the drug leads to a downward spiral into addiction, and the novel chronicles her struggles with the consequences. Crank explores the impact of addiction on Christina's relationships with her family and especially her strained relationship with her mother. The novel depicts the collateral damage that substance abuse can cause within a family unit. Ellen Hopkins is known for her realistic and gritty portrayal of difficult subjects. Crank doesn't shy away from depicting the harsh realities of drug addiction, including the physical and emotional toll it takes on the individual. Because I am Furniture because I Am Furniture is a young adult novel written by Talia Kautas. The book was first published in 2009 and deals with sensitive and impactful themes related to family dynamics, abuse, and the quest for self-identity. The novel is written in verse, offering a unique and poetic approach to storytelling. The verse format allows for a more intimate exploration of the protagonist's thoughts and emotions. The story is narrated by Ank, a high school girl who feels like an invisible observer within her own family. While her siblings face physical abuse from their father, Ank is spared from direct harm. However, she grapples with feelings of isolation and neglect as she becomes a mere piece of furniture unnoticed and uninvolved in the family's struggles. Ang's journey is one of self-discovery and finding her own voice. As she navigates the challenges within her own family, the novel explores her growth and development of her sense of identity. The story evolves as Ang finds ways to empower herself and break free from the silence imposed upon her. The novel portrays the strength and resilience of the human spirit, even in the face of adversity. The House That Crack Built this is a picture book written by Clark Taylor. The title is supposed to be a play on the title of a similar children's book called The House That Jack Built. The book reads, This is the man who lives in the house that Crack built. These are the soldiers that guard the man who lives in the house that Crack built. These are the farmers who work in the heat and fear the soldiers who guard the man who lives in the house that Crack built. These are the plants that people can't eat that are raised by the farmers that fear the soldiers that guard the man that lives in the house that Crack built. And it, keep, it keeps going down the line. Flowers in the Attic Flowers in the Attic is a novel written by V.C. Andrews, first published in 1979. It is the first book in the Dollinganger series, followed by Petals on the Wind, If There Be Thorns, Seeds of Yesterday, and Garden of Shadows. The story revolves around the Dollinganger family, Kathy, Chris, and their younger twin siblings, Carrie and Gory. After the sudden death of their father, the family faces financial ruin. To maintain their privileged lifestyle, the mother, Corrine, decides to move with her children to her parents' mansion. However, there is a dark secret awaiting for them in the mansion's attic. Upon arrival at the grandparents' home, the children are hidden away in the attic and subjected to mistreatment. Grandmother reveals a family secret that threatens to destroy their lives. The siblings must cope with the harsh conditions in the attic and the emotional turmoil caused by the family's dark history. The novel explores themes of isolation, forbidden love, and the psychological effect trauma on the characters. The siblings find solace in one another, leading to complex relationships that challenge societal norms. The book incorporates gothic elements, including a mysterious and oppressive mansion, family secrets, and a sense of foreboding. 
the novel's tone is both dark and suspenseful. The Lovely Bones The Lovely Bones is a novel written by Alice Sebold. It was published in 2002 and became a bestseller, receiving widespread acclaim for its unique narrative perspective and exploration of grief Ely. The book was adapted into a film in 2009 directed by Peter Jackson. The novel is narrated by Susie Salmon, a 14-year-old girl who was murdered in 1973. From her vantage point in the afterlife, Susie observes the impact of death on her family, friends, and the community. The use of an afterlife narrator provides a distinctive and emotionally charged perspective. The story begins with Susie's murder and follows the aftermath as her family and friends grapple with the tragedy. While Susie watches from her personal version of heaven, her family seeks justice for her death and attempts to move on with their lives. It explores themes of grief, loss, and the process of healing. Susie's family and friends each cope with her death in their own ways, and the novel delves into the complexities of mourning and coming to terms with tragedy. Junk Junk is a young adult novel written by British author Melvin Burgess. The book was first published in 1996 and has gained attention for its candid and sometimes controversial portrayal of teenage life, drug addiction, and street culture. The novel follows the lives of two teenagers, Gemma and Tar, who leave their homes to live on the streets of Bristol. As they navigate the challenges of homelessness, they become involved in the drug scene, particularly with heroin. The story explores their experiences with addiction, relationships, and the consequences of their choices. Junk addresses various themes relevant to teenagers, including rebellion, peer pressure, and the search for identity and the lure of drugs. The novel delves into the harsh realities of addiction and the impact it has on individuals and their relationships. The book has been praised for its unflinching and realistic portrayal of the challenges faced by teenagers dealing with addiction. However, it has also faced criticism and challenges in some educational settings due to its explicit content. Despite these controversies, Junk received critical acclaim for its authenticity, engaging storytelling, and its willingness to address difficult and often taboo subjects. The novel won the Carnegie Medal in 1997. Watership Down Watership Down is a classic novel written by English author, Rither, English author Richard Adams. It was first published in 1972 and has since become a beloved work of literature, particularly among readers of all ages. The novel is notable for its unique premise. It features a group of rabbits as its main characters and its exploration of themes such as survival, leadership, and the importance of home. The story is set in the English countryside, primarily around the area of Watership Down in Hampshire. The novel follows a group of rabbits who embark on a journey to find a new home after one of them has a premonition of danger in their warren. The main characters are a group of rabbits led by Hazel, Fiverr, Bigwig, and others. Each rabbit has distinctive traits and personalities, and their interactions and relationships drive the narrative. They face numerous challenges and dangers as they travel across the countryside in search of a safe and secure place to establish a new warren. The journey becomes an epic adventure with elements of survival, exploration, and camaraderie. One of the remarkable aspects of the book is how Adams humanizes the rabbits, giving them distinct personalities, language, and a complex social structure. This anthropomorphic approach allows readers to connect with the characters on a deeper level. Unwind Unwind is a young adult dystopian novel written by Neil Shusterman. It was published in 2007 and is the first book in the Unwind Dystology series. The novel explores complex ethical and moral questions related to life, death, and the value of individual autonomy. The story is set in a future society where a civil war was fought over reproductive rights. As a compromise, a law called the Bill of Life was passed, allowing parents to unwind their children between the ages of 13 and 18. Unwinding involves harvesting and transplanting all the organs and body parts of the teenager to other people in need. The novel follows three protagonists, Connor, Risa, and Lev. Connor is a troubled teenager whose parents have decided to unwind him. Risa is a ward of state facing unwinding due to budget cuts, and Lev is a tithe, a child raised to be unwound as a religious sacrifice. Their paths converge as they attempt to escape the fate of being unwound. Unwind explores themes of identity, autonomy, and the value of human life. The characters grapple with questions about their own humanity and the morality of a society that accepts the dismantling of teenagers for the supposed greater good. All the Truth That's In Me all the Truth That's In Me is a young adult historical fiction novel written by Julie Berry. The book was first published in 2013 and has received critical acclaim for its unique narrative structure and emotional depth. The novel is written in a distinctive and second-person narrative style, with the protagonist, Judith Finch, addressing her thoughts and experiences to an unnamed you. This adds an intimate and personal dimension to the storytelling. The story itself is set in a small Puritan town in what appears to be a historical, vaguely 19th century setting. Judith Finch is a young woman who was abducted and held captive for two years 
and upon her return, she faces a community that shuns her. Due to the trauma of her captor's mutilation of her tongue, Judith is unable to speak and faces prejudice and suspension from those around her. All the Truth That's In Me explores themes of silence, empowerment, and resilience. Judith's inability to speak becomes a metaphor for silencing women in her society, and her journey involves finding voice and asserting her agency. There is a romantic subplot in the novel involving Judith and her love interest, Lucas. The relationship contributes to the emotional complexity of the story. What Mr. Matero Did What Mr. Matero Did is written by Priscilla Cummings. It follows the story of two fifth grade students, Nora and Brooke, who find themselves in a difficult situation when their teacher, Mr. Matero, collapses during class. Instead of seeking immediate help, the two girls make a questionable decision to keep the incident a secret. The novel explores themes of responsibility, friendship, and the moral dilemmas faced by young characters. Priscilla Cummings is known for addressing important and sometimes challenging issues in her children's books. Her writing often focuses on the experience and dilemmas faced by young protagonists, encouraging readers to think critically about moral and ethical choices. Breathe My Name Breathe My Name is a young adult novel written by R.A. Nelson. It was first published in 2006 and explores themes of family, identity, and the search for self-understanding. The novel has been praised for its lyrical prose and its portrayal of complex relationships. The story follows a teenager named Frances Elizabeth Ann, or Frankie, who embarks on a journey to discover her roots and identity. Raised in an adoptive family, Frankie begins to question her heritage and the circumstances of her birth. She sets out to find her birth mother, leading her to a small town in West Virginia. The novel delves into the complexities of family relationships, including Frankie's relationships with her adoptive family and her birth mother. As Frankie seeks to understand her past, she uncovers the secrets that challenge her sense of self. It's a coming-of-age story that explores the protagonist's quest for self-discovery, while Frankie grapples with questions of identity, belonging, and the impact of her origins on her sense of self. It also incorporates romantic elements as Frankie navigates fr relationships in the small town where she discovers her birth mother. A Work of Art a Work of Art is a novel written by Melody Masonette. The book is published in 2015 and falls within the young adult contemporary fiction genre. It explores themes of love, obsession, art, and the complexities of relationships. The story revolves around Tara, a high school student and aspiring artist, who becomes involved in a complicated and intense relationship with Richard, a charismatic and enigmatic older man who is also an art teacher. As their relationship develops, it becomes clear that Richard's intentions may not be entirely benign. The novel incorporates themes related to art and creativity, and Tara's passion for art and her desire to express herself through her work are central to the narrative. A work of art delves into the dynamics of the relationship between Tara and Richard, exploring the power imbalances, emotional complexities, and the blurred lines between mentorship and manipulation. The Amber Spyglass The Amber Spyglass is the third and final book in Philip Pullman's critically acclaimed His Dark Materials trilogy. The novel was first published in 2000, and follows the events of Northern Lights, published as The Golden Compass in North America, and The Subtle Knife, which we already talked about. The trilogy is known for its rich world-building, complex characters, and exploration of philosophical and moral themes in its story. The main characters include Lyra Bellacqua and Will Perry, who continue their journey across various worlds. Characters are on a quest to understand the mysterious substance called dust, confront powerful institutions, and uncover the secrets of the universe. The Amber Spyglass continues to explore themes of morality, free will, and the nature of good and evil. The narrative delves into the consequences of knowledge and the power challenges and conventional ideas about morality. Characters form alliances and face betrayals as they navigate a world filled with political intrigue, religious conflict, and powerful entities seeking to control the destiny of all worlds. As with the previous book in the trilogy, The Amber Spyglass includes philosophical elements that encourage readers to contemplate broader questions about existence, consciousness, and the nature of reality. Night Night is a memoir by Elie Wiesel, a Holocaust survival and Nobel laureate. The book was first published in 1956 in Yiddish and later translated into English. It is a powerful and harrowing account of Wiesel's experiences as a teenager during the Holocaust. Night is a first-hand account of Elie Wiesel's experiences in a Nazi concentration camp, including Auschwitz and Buchenwald during World War II. It provides a deeply personal and poignant perspective on the horrors of the Holocaust. The narrative begins with Eliza or Elie Wiesel's childhood innocence and religious faith. As he and his family are transported to the concentration camps, 
The harsh reality of the Holocaust shatters his beliefs and forces him to confront the atrocities of war. A significant theme in the memoir is the relationship between Ellie and his father, Shlomo. Their bond is tested under brutal conditions of the concentration camps and the challenges they face together become a central aspect of the narrative. Knight vividly portrays the dehumanization of individuals in the concentration camps. Faisal describes the degradation, cruelty, and loss of humanity experienced by those subjected to the Holocaust. Faisal grapples with the existential questions throughout the narrative. The suffering and death he witnesses lead him to question the existence of God, and the nature of humanity. Knight has become one of the most widely read and studied Holocaust memoirs. It has been translated into numerous languages and is often included in educational curricula worldwide. Weissel's work has had a lasting impact, serving as a testament to the horrors of the Holocaust and a plea for remembrance and understanding. Scythe Scythe is a young adult science fiction novel written by Neil Shusterman. It was first published in 2016 and is the first book in the Ark of a Scythe trilogy. The novel explores themes related to mortality, ethics, and the consequences of unchecked power in a futuristic society. The story is set in a future world where humanity has conquered death and eliminated poverty and disease. The Thunderhead, all-knowing and benevolent artificial intelligence, governs the world and ensures the well-being of its inhabitants. In this utopian society, a group of individuals known as Scythes are tasked with controlling the population by gleaning or killing a certain percentage of people. Scythes are expected to uphold a moral code and maintain balance, but corruption and power struggles threaten the integrity of their role. The narrative follows two teenagers, Citra Terranova and Rowan Damish, who are chosen to become apprentices to a scythe. Their mentor is Scythe Faraday, and they must navigate the challenges and moral dilemmas of their new roles. The book examines the societal impact of achieving near immortality and unintended consequences of a world without natural death. It also raises philosophical questions about the meaning and value of life when death is no longer a natural occurrence. The influence of advanced technology, particularly the Thunderhead, also plays a significant role in the story. The Thunderhead's surveillance and control over society adds layers of complexity to the narrative. The Enemy The Enemy is a post-apocalyptic horror novel written by Charlie Hickson, who was first published in 2009 and is the first book in the Enemy series. The novel is set in a world where all adults have been infected with a disease that turns them into mindless, zombie-like creatures, leaving only children and teenagers to fend for themselves. The story is primarily set in London, which has become a dangerous and desolate place. The once vibrant city is now inhabited by roaming groups of infected adults, referred to as mothers or grown-ups, who pose a constant threat to the surviving children. The central theme of the novel is survival, obviously. Children face not only the physical dangers of the infected adults, but also the challenges of finding food, shelter, and forming alliances with other groups of survivors. The book has several protagonists, including Small Sam, Aaron, Maxie, and others. Each character has their own strengths, weaknesses, and personal struggles as they navigate the perilous landscape and confront the horrors of the new world. The survivors range in age from young children to teenagers, and the novel explores how different age groups adapt to the harsh realities of their situation. The enemy is known for its graphic and intense scenes, including violence and gore, and it doesn't shy away from depicting the brutal realities of a world overrun by infected adults. Invisible Beans Invisible Fiends is a young adult horror series written by Irish author Barry Hutchison. The series consists of six books, each focusing on a different invisible fiend, or malevolent entity, that terrorizes the protagonist, Kyle. The books are known for their suspenseful and creepy atmosphere, targeting a teenage audience interested in horror and supernatural themes. The main character of the series is Kyle, a teenager who becomes the target of various invisible fiends. Each book in the series introduces a different fiend, and Kyle must confront and overcome these supernatural threats. The term invisible fiends refers to malevolent entities that are unseen by most people. These fiends prey on the fears and vulnerabilities of the individuals, and they take on various forms and characteristics in order to terrify and torment their victims. While each book in the series shares a common theme of invisible fiends, they are all distinct stories with unique fiends and challenges for the protagonist. The titles of books include Mr. Mumbles, Raggy Maggie, Blood, Doc Mortis, The Crowmaster, and Banshee's Stare. The Plague Dogs The Plague Dogs is a novel written by Richard Adams, the acclaimed author of Watership Down. Published in 1977, The Plague Dogs is a dark and thought-provoking story that explores themes of freedom, survival, and the consequences of human actions on animals. The story revolves around two dogs, Ralph and Snitter, who escape from a research laboratory in England. The dogs have been subjected to cruel experiments, and they embark on a perilous journey through the Lake District wilderness to avoid capture. The novel raises ethical questions about animal testing and treatment of animals in scientific research, 
The experiments conducted on Rauf and Snitter involved them being exposed to a deadly virus which adds a layer of urgency to their quest for freedom. The Plague Dogs also examines the complex relationships between humans and animals, and it portrays the dogs' interactions with people they encounter, highlighting both compassionate individuals and those who view the dogs as a threat. Like Adam's other works, The Plague Dogs incorporates allegorical elements that comment on broader societal issues. It addresses themes of freedom, the consequences of scientific advancements, and the moral responsibilities associated with human actions. The Plague Dogs has been met with controversy and criticism due to its graphic depiction of animal cruelty and the bleak nature of the story, and while some readers appreciate its depth in social commentary, others find it emotionally challenging. The Bunker Diary The Bunker Diary is a young adult novel written by Kevin Brooks, was published in 2013 and won the Carnegie Medal, one of the most prestigious awards for children's and young adult literature. The novel is known for its dark and disturbing themes, as well as its unconventional narrative structure. The story revolves around a 16-year-old boy named Linus Weems, who wakes up in a mysterious bunker with no memory of how he got there. As soon, he discovers he is not alone. Five other people of different ages and backgrounds are also trapped in the bunker, and none of them know where they are. The characters are isolated from the outside world, and the claustrophobic setting adds to the tension and sense of despair. It's written in the first-person perspective, and Linus Weems serves as the primary narrator. However, as the story progresses, the narrative perspective shifts to the other characters, providing insights to their thoughts and experiences. The Bunker Diary deals with dark and unsettling themes, including captivity, manipulation, and the psychological toll of isolation. The novel does not shy away from exploring the impact of extreme circumstances on human behavior. Living Dead Girl Living Dead Girl is a young adult novel written by Elizabeth Scott. Published in 2008, the book addresses a harrowing and sensitive subject matter, including child abduction, abuse, and captivity. The narrative explores the psychological and emotional impact of trauma on the protagonist. The story centers around a girl named Alice who is abducted by a man named Ray when she was just 10 years old. The novel picks up five years into Alice's captivity, where she is living under Ray's control. The title, Living Dead Girl, reflects Alice's sense of being trapped in the loss of her identity. It delves into the disturbing and challenging themes of captivity and abuse. Alice is subjected to race manipulation, coercion, and violence, and her story sheds light on the horrors faced by victims of such crimes. As the narrative unfolds, readers witness the psychological toll of Alice's traumatic experiences and explores her internal struggle, numbness, and the ways in which she copes with her circumstances. Despite the dire situation, Alice holds on to the desire for freedom. Due to its sensitive subject matter, the book has been both praised for its honesty and criticized for its dark themes. It's important for potential readers to be aware of the book's content and themes before deciding to read it. Sarah's Face Sarah's Face is a young adult novel written by Melvin Burgess. The book was published in 2007 and is a contemporary novel that explores themes related to identity, beauty, and the consequences of making extreme choices. The story centers around Sarah, a teenage girl obsessed with her appearance and desires to be perfect, in a society that places high value on physical beauty. Sarah is willing to go to great lengths to achieve her ideal look. The novel delves into the theme of plastic surgery and the lengths to which individuals may go to conform to societal standards of beauty. Sarah decides to undergo a series of extreme cosmetic procedures to alter her appearance, and as she undergoes this transformation, the novel explores the impact of physical changes on her identity and self-perception. It delves into the psychological aspects of beauty standards and the consequences of societal pressures. Anatomy, a love story. The book is written by Dana Schwartz, and here's the description off of goodreads.com. A gothic tale full of mystery and romance about a willful female surgeon, resurrection man, who sells bodies for a living, and the buried secrets they must uncover together. Edinburgh, 1870. Hazel Sinnott is a lady who wants to be a surgeon more than she wants to marry. Jack Currer is a resurrection man who's just trying to survive in a city where it's too easy to die. When the two of them have a chance encounter outside the Edinburgh Anatomist Society, Hazel thinks nothing of it at first. But after she gets kicked out of renowned surgeon Dr. Beecham's lectures for being the wrong gender, she realizes that her new acquaintance might be more helpful than she first thought. Because Hazel has made a deal with Dr. Beecham, if she can pass the medical examination on her own, university will allow her to enroll. Without official lessons, though, Hazel will need more than just her books. She'll need bodies to study, corpses to dissect. Lucky that she's made an acquaintance of someone who digs them up for a living, then. But Jack has his own problems. Strange men have been skulking around cemeteries, and his friends are disappearing off the streets. Hazel and Jack work together to uncover the secrets buried not just in unmarked graves, but in the very heart of the Edinburgh Society. The Lonely Doll The Lonely Doll is a children's book written by Dare Wright and first published in 1957. 
The book features black and white photographs with accompanying text and tells the story of a doll named Edith, who feels lonely and wishes for a friend. One day, two teddy bears named Mr. Bear and Little Bear come to life in her home, and they become her companions. The story explores themes of friendship, companionship, and the importance of connections in a child's life. The narrative is simple and charming, accompanied by photographs that depict the adventures and interactions of the characters. The photographs are taken by Dare Wright herself, who is also a photographer and a former model. The Lonely Doll was a first in a series of books featuring Edith and the teddy bears. The subsequent books in the series include Edith and Mr. Bear, A Gift from the Lonely Doll, and others. The books are well received and gained popularity for their unique combination of photography and storytelling. While The Lonely Doll is a beloved classic for many readers, it has also faced some criticism in later years for its portrayal of discipline and punishment. Some readers and scholars have noted that the book's depiction of Mr. Bear spanking Edith has raised concerns about the appropriateness of such scenes in children's literature. Don't Make Me Go Back, Mom Don't Make Me Go Back, Mommy, a child's book about satanic ritual abuse, is a self-published book written by Doris Sanford and illustrated by Gracie Evans. It was first published in 1990. The book is intended to address the topic of satanic ritual abuse, or SRA, from the perspective of a child. Satanic ritual abuse is a controversial and largely discredited phenomenon that emerged in the 1980s. It involves the claims of widespread, organized, and ritualistic abuse, often with accusations of satanic cults being responsible for heinous acts. Subsequent investigations, however, have found little to no credible evidence supporting these claims, and many were eventually debunked. Don't Make Me Go Back, Mommy purports to be a therapeutic tool for children who have allegedly experienced satanic ritual abuse. The story is told from the perspective of a little girl named Allison, who recounts her experiences of being abused in a satanic cult. The book includes explicit and graphic illustrations depicting these alleged abuses, and it's important to note that the book has been widely criticized and condemned for its sensationalized and potentially harmful content. Many mental health professionals, researchers, and experts in the field of child abuse caution against such material, as it may contribute to the spread of unfounded fears and misinformation. Hiroshima no Pika Hiroshima no Pika is a graphic novel written and illustrated by Toshi Maruki. It was first published in Japan in 1980 under the title Hiroshima no Pika, literally translated as The Flash of Hiroshima, and later translated into English. The book is also known by its English title, Hiroshima no Pika, or Flash. The graphic novel provides a poignant and powerful account of the atomic bombing of Hiroshima during World War II. The story is told through the eyes of a family living in Hiroshima at the time of the bombing. The narrative focuses on the experiences of the mother and her daughter who witnessed the devastating effects of the atomic bomb. The title, Hiroshima no Pika, refers to the blinding flash of light that occurred during the explosion. The book uses stark black and white illustrations to convey the horror and impact of the bombing of the people of Hiroshima. The narrative doesn't shy away from depicting the suffering and aftermath of the event. Toshi Maruki, along with her husband, Ira Maruki, were artists and peace activists who created the Hiroshima Panels, a series of paintings depicting the horrors of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Hiroshima no Pika is an extension of their commitment to preserving the memory of the atomic bombings and advocating for peace. The Night Dad Went to Jail the Night Dad Went to Jail, What to Expect When Someone You Love Goes to Jail, is a children's book written by Melissa Higgins and illustrated by Wednesday Kerwan. Published in 2012, the book is designed to help children understand and cope with the difficult emotions they may experience when a parent or someone they love goes to jail. The story is told from the perspective of a young raccoon named Melissa, whose father is arrested and goes to jail. The book addresses the various emotions and questions that a child may have in such a situation, including confusion, sadness, anger, and fear. It provides age-appropriate explanations and reassurances for children, helping them navigate the complex emotions associated with having a loved one in jail. The Night Dad Went to Jail is part of a Life's Challenges series, which includes other titles that address sensitive issues that children may encounter, such as divorce, moving, and the death of a loved one. The goal of the series is to offer support and guidance to children facing challenging life events. And we finally come to our last entry, I'd Really Like to Eat a Child. I'd Really Like to Eat a Child is a children's book written and illustrated by Silviana Donio and Dorothy de Monfried. The book was first published in 2001 and has been translated into several languages. The story centers around a little crocodile named Achille, who declares that he'd really like to eat a child. Despite the seemingly alarming premise, the book is actually a humorous and playful story that explores the theme of trying new things and the importance of acceptance. Achille, the young crocodile, is frustrated because he is constantly given bananas by his parents. He becomes curious about what a child might taste like 
and embarks on an adventure to find one to eat. As the story unfolds, Achille encounters a little girl named Chloe. Instead of being frightened, Chloe befriends Achille and shares her toys and games with him. The narrative takes a surprising turn as Achille discovers playing with Chloe is much more enjoyable than eating her. How could he know that unless he ate her? I'd Really Like to Eat a Child has been praised for its lighthearted and humorous approach to addressing the themes of curiosity, friendship, and acceptance. The illustrations are colorful and engaging, contributing to the overall charm of the book. The story's unexpected twists offers a positive message about the value of friendship and the idea that preconceived notions can be challenged and changed. And that's it for the iceberg. Thanks so much for listening and sticking around to the end. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.